All right, I got some ants in my pants. This is not totally dry, but I'm gonna start taking the bark off this thing. Alright, I got the log inside. I'm going to show everybody how I lay it out. I have a carpenter's laser. You can see the line right here. It, the laser is on a tripod and I have the counter, uh, the cabinet, uh, the ca uh, camera mounted somewhere else. So I'm um, sort of multitasking here. So what I have is a small center point that represents the center of this log. This is pretty much circular, so it's real easy to find the center. On the other side, what I did was I found the middle of the uh, smallest growth rings. It's not in the center of the log, but that's where I want my cut. So what I did was I struck with the laser on the other end of the log a vertical line and I colored it in with magic marker just like this now I have some wedges propped up underneath the log when you're doing this you can't move the log so I have a perfectly vertical log on this end a perfectly vertical line on the end of this log back here and I have a small mark right at the top of the log up here right at the top of that line on the end of the log. I transferred a small mark to the top of the log. So now I'm going to do the same thing with this without moving the log. And I'm going to follow the laser line. It's actually easy to, easier to go towards the laser with the marker. This way the marker itself is not in the way of the laser. Now this log is damp so it's not the greatest way of using the marker but that will give you exactly what you need so now what I do is I have to roll this log 180 degrees and get the other side so the first thing I have to do is adjust the wedges so you can't see this very well but I gotta roll this log slightly to get it lined up again right on right on that laser line that looks pretty good now back here here's my mark 
Okay, so my laser is off now. So what I'm going to do is come back to the tripod and I want my laser line to go through this mark on the end but converge to the mark in the back of the log back here. That looks real good. So now I have a mark on each end of the log. Very much in line. I don't want to use the P word and say it's perfect, but I'm very confident in, the, in this procedure that I use to lay this out. Now, I've done, the longest log I ever did was 52 inches long, and uh, some of them are really wavy, and this line will go over all the ins and outs of the log, and you'll be able to strike a, a, a straight line, no matter what the shape is of the end, whether it's cut on an angle, or it's up, or whatever, or if there's uh, stubs of branches coming out through here you'll get a very so now all these four marks are in the same plane and as long as you're accurate with your hand saw you're going to be able to slice this in half and the idea is to pass the saw through the center of the log at least once you want to eliminate the center of the log in any of your blocks um, because when the tree is young it grows rapid rapidly and then within that block you're gonna have a tight circle of grain and uh, it's, you know obviously the circumference the diameter of the of the uh, grain the growth rings is going to be real small because it was a small a small tree at that time and also because of the rapid growth you're gonna have widely spaced growth rings because the first few years of a tree's life it grows real quick so the idea is and that's wheat grain it's very unstable so you're if you would take a board and go all the way through here and use a board with the center of the log you're gonna have that center grain in there and it's gonna be unstable your your boards will curl etc etc so for the purposes of making planes you want to eliminate that so your first cut is going to be through the center of the of the log so that no no blocks taken from this log contain the center of the log and uh, and then from there you can adjust your yield where you may have part of the center or you could you could theoretically quarter it so that no block has even half of the center and so on and so forth but, and I've done, I've done both, but the idea is to avoid using the center of the log at all costs.
All right. That's the idea. You got very little crossover right here in the middle, but pretty much this is all flat. Everything that it's a very light colored maple. I think this is the maple that I've been using since 2014. It's what I would call just a white maple. And I'm right through the core of the log right here on both ends. So now I'm going to lay this out for some blocks. Okay, I got some ideas to lay out this section of log that I just cut. First thing I'm going to do though is take my scrub plane and flatten it a little bit because I'm going to be passing the worm drive over here to take a shortcut and uh, that way I won't have to do all of this by hand. Once I have this flat spot I'll do as much as I can with the worm drive. Um, I think it only goes in like two and a half inches so there's still plenty to do by hand. So, what I want to do with this, I made some marks already. I'm going to take a piece out of here for a large, uh, like let's say, coffin plane. So, my blank is going to be rough, roughly cut at four inches thick. So I'm going to start right at this point that I have marked already. I'm going to use my square because now I'm going to take advantage of these flat spots. So my minimum dimension through here, the reason I chose this location is because this is four and a quarter. I want a minimum of four. So I'm allowing for shrinkage when this dries and also any irregularities that might be in the perimeter of the log further back because this is all wavy so somewhere in here right here I have four and a quarter but I might have a little bit less in the middle it's still plenty now what I do to to get the point on the back end of the log is I look at the grain so I'm not measuring off the center I'm not measuring off the edge of the log I want parallel grain in my blank so I have that marked then, and again, the reason, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at the grain. That's how I determine. So I connect this point to the point back here and make this line that I'm about to cut parallel to the growth rings that are embedded in this log. So that's how I determine that. And then I'll connect this with the straight edge then I'll come back four inches and I'll run the uh, the worm drive across that then I'll come back this way So on these two lines, the worm drive is only going to come down about two and a half inches. What I'm going to do is set the laser up again. I'm not going to film that because it's repetitive. But what I'll do is turn this log over and then I'll make marks on the top of the log and I'll use the laser to connect this point to the common point back on the other log along the perimeter. And then I'll turn, when I finish the cuts with the worm drive, I'll flip it over and I'll have a line that I can follow to complete the cut with the rip saws, the hand rip saws. So 
this will get me one big blank and then I'll figure out what I have left this is this cheek is going to be too short too small to do anything with so this will be for small stuff this will be for handles wedges stuff like that and then I think I can get another plane out of here but I'm gonna I'll work on that later but this is just a rough idea of how to how to get the yield out of um, a small section of log so now let me go to the other section same thing So now I got some blanks I want to do with this half of the log. I got a line coming down the center and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a, uh, uh, a layout based on a flat plane right to the center of this half. And what I'm going to do is plan on, uh, let's see, I need, I need to make a plane that finishes at two and a quarter. So I'm going to come over two and three quarters Let's see two and three quarters so I'm allowing for a half inch of shrinking and all that other good stuff So now I'll connect these lines through here and it looks like it's pretty parallel with the growth rings so I'm not going to have any, any problems with that. So then what I'll do is come through there like that, come through there like that. Same thing on the other end, connect those lines. This will give me two nice blanks for big juicy molding planes that I already have in mind this will be for the wedges and handles and all sorts of other nice stuff parallel clamps all your little inventions and stuff so that's what I'm gonna do with this one 